Okay, geometry, this is a video for 8-4. Um, they're starting to get us into trig, so this is really exciting. Um, uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, I don't know if we've had this before last year at all or not, but this is uh, the Sokotoa. Layla, you've got to go somewhere else. Okay, so Sokotoa. Um, the, the three main trig functions are sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, you will see them abbreviated, which is the first three letters. So uh, instead of writing S-I-N-E out, it will be S-I-N, um, C-O-S, and T-A-N. Now, this is a pet peeve of mine. Do not pronounce them sin, cos, and tan, okay? It is still pronounced sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, otherwise, it just sounds silly. So sine, cosine, tangent, that's what the Sokotoa, the capital letters, or the big letters of the Sokotoa mean. And then what we find is that um, when using sine, cosine, and tangent, these little letters that come after them in the Sokotoa just tell the ratio of the sides that we're going to talk about. So, so basically using sine, cosine, and tangent as a way of relating the three sides or two of the three sides of a triangle to one another. Okay. Now, one more thing that I will add before we go on is that when you are doing um, Sokotoa, this only works... for a right triangle. Only works for a right triangle. So you can only do this when we have right triangles, um, which is kind of what we've been talking about already, um, but but only for right triangles, okay? Um, so I'm gonna just bump straight down to example one and we'll see if we can kind of catch on to this. Um, they want in A, B, C, they want us to look at angle P. So they're saying find sine of P, cosine of P, and tangent of P, okay? And we're going to use this diagram to write out uh, sine, cosine, and tangent of P, okay? So I'm going to have you, first of all, circle uh, angle P there. And what they basically just want us to do is, as a fraction and a decimal, they want us to write out what sine is, what cosine is, and what tangent is, okay? So there's my fractions, getting them ready to go, okay? So for... Sine, cosine, and tangent, we follow Sokotoa. I'll write it down here again. Okay. And what we need to determine for P is for each one of these, like S O H C A H T O A, the O's all stand for opposites. O equals opposites. The H means hypotenuse. And the A means, I'll do a capital A. A means adjacent, okay? Uh, so for P, if, if we're trying to relate the sides of P, okay, um, the side that is opposite side P is going to be 15, okay? This is going to be my opposite side, okay? Now, if I look at this triangle, the hypotenuse side is the one that's opposite the 90-degree angle, or it's going to be the longest side always, okay? So the hypotenuse side is going to be 17, and then the other side, the third side, is the adjacent side, okay? The adjacent, adjacent means uh, right next to, I think we've talked about that in geometry before, right next to, because you have adjacent angles that are right next to each other. Adjacent means right next to. So really, um, for angle P, it really kind of has two adjacent sides. It has this one here, which is 8, I think, and this one here, which is 17. So it has two adjacent sides, but... Since this one's already the hypotenuse, we don't call him the adjacent. Um, he will only have 8 as his adjacent side. Okay, So going from P, we have opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. Those labeled out that way. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to write out what sine, cosine, and tangent are. Okay, So sine is O-H, S-O-H, okay? opposite, hypotenuse. Okay, The opposite is going to go on top. The hypotenuse is going to go on the bottom. Okay, So if we're looking at P, opposite is 15. That goes on top. Hypotenuse is 17. That guy goes on the bottom. Okay, and then here in just a minute we'll we'll figure out what, what what these all are as decimals. Okay, cosine then is a h. So that means the adjacent side goes as the top of my ratio. The hypotenuse side goes as the bottom. So the adjacent side is going to be 8. The hypotenuse side is going to be 17. So 8 over 17. That's a and then h. Okay, and then tangent. Okay, is o a. Tangent is toa. Opposite, adjacent. Opposite goes on top, adjacent goes on the bottom. Okay, so kind of think about what he would look like. Opposite, 15. Adjacent is the bottom. That would be 8. 
okay? And that's what he will look like as a trig function, okay? So let's go ahead and figure out what those are. It's decimals to the nearest hundredth, okay? Hundredth means two decimals, or two decimal places is where we're rounding to, okay? So uh, 15 over 17, you write that out as a decimal, is 0.88, okay? 8 divided by 17 is 0 0.47, and 15 divided by 8 is uh, 1.88, okay? That's what um, sine, cosine, and tangent of P are going to be, okay? Now they want us to do that in terms of Q, so I'm going to do this in a different color so we can kind of have something color-coded here. Um, Q is going to be this angle right here, and in this case, I want to write out sine, cosine, and tangent, so same thing, opposite hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse, opposite adjacent, except we need to relabel our sides, which one is the opposite, which one's the hypotenuse, etc., right? Okay, so if I have Q here, which side is going to be the opposite? Is it going to be 15, 8, or 17? Okay, opposite is going to be the 8 now, so it's no longer the adjacent side, it's now the opposite side. Okay, now, going from angle Q, which one is the hypotenuse side, okay? The hypotenuse is still going to be 17, okay? Um, I really could have left that H there. It does not matter which angle you're going from, the hypotenuse will always be the hypotenuse, no matter what, okay? Then this side goes from O, and he is now the adjacent side. He's the one that's right next to angle Q, okay? Um, so that's kind of how those sides change. Really, it's just the opposite and adjacent that have flipped around when we're looking at Q instead of P. Okay, so now we're looking at these green guys, and we are going to do sine, cosine, and tangent, our ratios, and then we're going to convert them to decimals. Okay, so sine, again, is opposite hypotenuse, so we want the opposite side, which is 8, hypotenuse side, which is 17, so that's what he will look like. Okay, cosine, we want adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, the adjacent side is 15, hypotenuse side is 17, so that's what he will look like, 15 over 17. Then tangent is opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is 8. The adjacent side is 15. And that's what he will look like. Okay? All right now, you might, you might notice that um, uh, sine of P was 15 over 17, and cosine of Q is 15 over 17. Okay? That's uh, not just a coincidence. That's the way that it will, it will always be when you're looking at the two angles when you flip them around sine of the first angle will be the same as cosine of the other angle, okay? So I know that 15 over 17 is 0 0.88. I'm going to plop that here, okay? The same thing with cosine of P and sine of Q, okay? Those two are, are the same as each other, 8 over 17, 8 over 17. So this guy is 0 0.47. Now, that will always be the case that those have the same relationship. Um, you know, that's just kind of the way that it works. And then tangent is uh, just those two flipped around. Um, because, again, we just took the opposite and adjacent, and we flipped those two. So instead of it being 15 over 8, it will be 8 over 15, which is uh, 0 0.53, 0 0.53, okay? So that's what each one of those will look like when they ask us to fill out sine, cosine, and tangent um, of those types of things, okay? All right, example two. <clears throat> they say use a special right triangle to express the tangent of 30 degrees, okay, as a fraction and a decimal. So we're wanting to know what tangent of 30 degrees is, okay? Up here we had like tangent of P and tangent of Q. Now we actually have tangent of a number, okay? So we're going to figure out what that ratio is, and then we're going to figure out what the decimal is, okay? So what I want to do is I'm going to use a special right triangle, and the two special right triangles that we have are a 45, 45, 90, and a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, okay? So which one do you think that we're going to use in this case? Since we're looking at tangent of 30 degrees, we're going to use the one that involves 30, okay? So we need to label these sides inside of this special right triangle. And I have that this is a 90 degree angle here, okay? That's got to be the 90 one. And then which one is 30 and which one is 60? This guy is going to be the 60 degree. This guy is going to be the 30 degree, okay? And then um, it helps to remember what your 30, 60, 90 ratios were. So um, if you think back to the last section, if this guy is 2, this guy is going to be half of that, which is 1, and this guy is the square root of 3. Okay, so those are my, that's my original 30, 60, 90, those ratios, 1, 2, square root of 3. 
Okay, so then all we need to do is figure out what tangent is, and we want tangent of 30 degrees. So we're looking at this angle up top here, okay? And we're only wanting tangent, so we only want the opposite and adjacent, okay, from the tangent. Uh, so I need the opposite to go on the top and the adjacent to go on the bottom, okay? So now we look at 30 and we say which one is opposite that, okay? Opposite that is 1, okay? And then um, the adjacent side is, well, he kind of has two adjacent sides, right? Like two sides that are right next to him. It's either the square root of 3 or the 2, okay? But which one of those is the hypotenuse? Okay, the hypotenuse is going to be 2, so this guy has to be the adjacent side. So square root of 3 goes on the bottom. So 1 over the square root of 3 is how we're going to write that, and then they want us to convert that to a decimal. So 1 divided by the square root of 3, and 0 0.58. 0 0.58 is what he will look like. So there's my decimal, here's my fraction. Okay, that's how we're going to write those. Okay? Alright, now... The reason why we write all these out and we have to know what the trig ratios are and all those fractions and stuff is so that we can actually use that to solve things like example three, okay? Now, example three, they're not going to have us write out sine, cosine, and tangent. We have to pick one of them, okay? Um, so only doing one trig function, but we have to choose, and, and we have to choose wisely based on the information that we're given here, okay? So a certain part of a hiking trail slopes upward at a five-degree angle. I'm going to draw what this thing looks like because I can't, I can't see what's on there. Um, okay. okay, here's my hiking trail. Oh my gosh, that's really bad. Uh, there's my 90-degree angle. Five degrees is the slope upward. Okay, there's my five-degree angle. Um, after traveling a, traveling a horizontal distance of 100 feet, okay, that's not the sloped distance, that's this distance here. So this guy is 100 feet along the trail. What would be the change in the hiker's vertical position, okay? So vertical means the up and down one. They want to know what this is. Okay, let's call him X, okay? Um, what distance is the hiker traveling along the path? Okay, then they want us to solve for Y. They want us to figure out what that guy is too. Okay, so let's solve for x first. We'll solve for x over here, and we'll solve for y over here. Okay, so solving for x, we need to decide um, the only angle that I'm given is 5 degrees. Okay, so which trig function are we going to use, sine, cosine, or tangent? Okay, if we're solving for x, that means we're looking at this guy, and the only other piece of information that I know is 100 feet, so I know I'm going to have to use that somehow, some way. Okay. So in relationship to this 5 degrees, okay, we have to decide what x is. Okay, is x the opposite, the adjacent, the hypotenuse? It is going to be the opposite side. Okay, and then 100, is he the hypotenuse or adjacent? Okay, this is the hypotenuse side, so this one has to be the adjacent side. Okay, so what I want to do is when I'm solving for x, I want to use the opposite and adjacent. Okay, this one's going to involve opposite and adjacent, okay? So, I want to look for the trig function that involves opposite and adjacent, okay? And which one of these trig functions, sine, cosine, or tangent, involves opposite and adjacent, okay? That's going to be tangent, okay? So, I'm going to write out tangent, all right? So, tangent is the only one that we're going to use to solve for x. We're not going to use sine and cosine. All right, get this going over here, okay? So, tangent, and then whenever we put our tangent down, we want to put uh, the measurement of the angle inside of here. So it's tangent of 5 degrees. Up above here was tangent of 30. Now it's tangent of 5. And then we say equals, and we write that fraction out. Okay, so tangent of 5 equals, since it's TOA, opposite first and then adjacent, the opposite side is going to go on top, and we call that opposite side x. Adjacent is going to go on the bottom, and we call that 100. Okay, then if we want to get x by itself, we need to get rid of that 100 and move it to the other side. So I'm going to multiply by 100. Okay, multiply by 100. So x is going to be equal to 100 times tangent of 5. Okay, and I'm going to plug that into my calculator. 100 tangent of 5. And that gives me 8.75 what x will be. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Okay, what, 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 what? 8.75 feet is going to be that vertical distance there, okay? Um, all right, now we need to solve for a y, okay? So I'm still going to use the information um, that, I'm, that I'm given. I know that I have 5 degrees, okay? I know that y is the hypotenuse side, and I'm going to use 100, 
even though I, I know that this is 8.75, I'm just going to use the original 100 uh, because we did round 8.75 and we don't want to use a rounded number. So we want to use 100 feet. So I'm going to use these three pieces of information. Okay, so I need the trig function that involves A and H, so the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side. Okay, um, so looking at my Sokotoa, let's go here. Sokotoa, which one involves A, H? Okay, that is going to be my cosine. Okay, and cosine of what? What will go in this parentheses? We want to put the angle in there, and that's going to be 5. Okay, then we have to write out our ratio. So cosine of 5 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. That's what CAH is, right? Adjacent goes first. The adjacent side is 100, and the hypotenuse side is going to be Y. Okay, now here's the deal. When you have Y on the bottom here, what you will be able to do is to solve for Y, you can just switch these two pieces around. So y will be equal to 100 divided by cosine of 5. Okay, that's kind of how that, that works. If you've taken uh, one of Mr. Moose's classes, you'll see that you or you you know that those two bottom parts will just switch around if your y or if what you're solving for is on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to type that in. I'm going to do 100 divided by cosine of 5, and that should give me um, about how far. Mommy. We're going 100 point, uh, let's go 38, 100 .38 What's the matter? You need to be careful. I don't know. You dropped it in there. I can't do anything. Okay, so 100.38 feet is what he will look like. Okay, so just slightly bigger than the 100 feet that's on the bottom, um, but that's okay. So. Um, when you're solving for a, a variable, you'll only use one trig function um, to solve each one. You don't have to write out sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, let's go to the back side and see what they have going on here. Okay. All right. I'm going to go down to, uh, yeah, let's go down to example four. Okay. I'm going to skip this box up at the top here, and I'll kind of just talk you through how that box works here. Um, but use a calculator to find the measure of angle A. Okay. Now, this is kind of backwards. Here, in this case, we are solving for an angle, okay? All right, solving for an angle, solving for an angle, okay? That's important. So when you're solving for an angle, there's one little tricky thing that you have to do um, that's a little bit different than the problem that we just got done with, okay? So here's how this works. Angle A, we're solving for angle A, um, and I want to look at 18 and 27, the information that I'm given, and try to determine what sides those are. Okay, so is that my opposite side, my adjacent side, hypotenuse and adjacent, what is it? Okay, so 18 is going to be your opposite side, 27 is going to be your hypotenuse side. Okay, um, this guy is your adjacent side, because uh, he's right next to him. Um, so we want to use opposite and adjacent, or excuse me, opposite and hypotenuse. Okay. So, going back to the SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, -H okay, which trig function are we going to use if we need to use opposite and hypotenuse? We're going to use sine, okay? So sine, uh, in this case, we, we always do sine of the angle, and in this case, uh, my angle, I don't know, so we're going to leave him as A right here. That's what he's labeled, okay? And then we have sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is 18. Hypotenuse side is 27, okay? Now, here's where this is a little bit different than what we did on the last section, okay? Here, the A is trapped inside of sine, okay? So how do I get the sine to go away? Well, I can't just divide sine over, right? Because the A is trapped inside of the sine. So what I do is something called an inverse function. Inverse, inverse function, okay? And what that looks like is sine, it's kind of like sine to the negative one power. Okay, that's what it looks like. On your calculator, that button is located. Uh, if you can see sine here, inverse sine is this second, this is like, it's like shift or second sine. Okay, so what happens then is if I do inverse sine and sine together, those guys will cross out and I will have A will be inverse sine of 18 over 27. That's what he will look like. Okay, and then we can figure out what that is using our calculators. So practice typing that in. Inverse sine 
of 18 divided by 27. Close parentheses, enter. That is 41.8 degrees is what he will be. Okay, and so I have figured out what angle A is. There you go. Okay, all right, we're going to do the same thing kind of down here for example 5. Solve the right triangle, round the sides to E, uh, sides uh, measures to the nearest tenth. Okay, so my angles are labeled as X, Y, Z. So we're going to label them capital X, capital Y, capital Z. Okay, now my trig kids are kind of doing something similar to this as well, um, and, and they have not only the angles X, Y, Z, but they have lowercase x, lowercase y, and lowercase z, which are labeling the sides. So these are my sides, and these are going to be my angles. Okay. Um, so we need to find when it says solve the right triangle. That means it's that means we're trying to find everything that's not already there. Okay. So now I know that x is this angle up top here, y is this angle right here, and z is this angle here. And z, I actually know what he is. Okay. Uh, he is a 90 degree angle, so I'm going to fill him in. He is 90 degrees. Okay, but then um, I have to ask myself, okay, what's lowercase x? Which one's lowercase y and which one's lowercase z? Like, which one's 5? Is 5 x, y, or z? Okay, since the 5 is opposite angle y, okay, this is going to be lowercase y. Okay, so 5 goes here. Okay, now 9, you see if you can figure out, 9, is he x or is he z? He is opposite angle x, so he is going to be labeled with x. That's what 9 is, okay? And then z will be this guy up here, which we don't really know yet, okay? But we're going to figure him out here in just a second. So we have three things that we don't know. We're trying to figure out what the other three things are. Um, it says round each measure to the nearest tenth and angle measures to the nearest degree, okay? So um, let's solve for z first, because that one we kind of um, might know something that can help us solve. We know that this is 5 and this is 9. Is there something that we can use to solve what angle z is? Now, knowing that this is a right triangle, okay, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay? And in this case, which side is side z? Is it 5, 9, or which side is side c? Is it 5, 9, or z? Okay. And in this case, it's going to be my hypotenuse side, which is z. Okay, so we're going to call this guy z squared. Um, we'll plug 5 in for a, 9 in for b. All right, and then we can solve for what z is. Okay, so 5 squared is 25. 9 squared is 81. And that's z squared. 25 plus 81, try to do some of this stuff in your head if you can. That's 106 is z squared. And then to solve for z, let's see what we get. Square root of 106 is 10.3. They want to one decimal place. That's what z will be. 10.3. Okay. So I'm going to put that here. All right. Now we're going to use a trig function to solve for um, to solve for either x or y. And I'm going to use a different color because I've kind of made a mess here of my purple and green. So let's maybe solve for x first. Okay. So solving for x, I know it. I know that this guy is 9 and this guy is 5, so let's use those two. And in relationship to x, 9 is that the opposite hypotenuse adjacent. 9 is going to be opposite, okay? 5 is that opposite hypotenuse adjacent. That one's going to be the adjacent side. The hypotenuse is, is uh, z, okay? So we want to we want to use the trig function that involves o and a, okay? So which trig function involves o and a? That's going to be tangent. All right, so I'm going to do tangent, and tangent, think about what goes inside of here. That's the angle, which we're going to call x, okay? And I want O and then A, so I want opposite on top, adjacent on the bottom, and then think about how you get the x by itself to get rid of the tangent. You're going to do inverse tangent, inverse tangent of 9 over 5. So x is inverse tangent of 9 over 5. Let me type that in. Uh, let's see. Second tangent of 9 divided by 5 is how I'm going to write it in my calculator. So that's what it will look like. And I get 60.9 degrees, but they want the degrees um, rounded to the nearest degree. So this would be 61 degrees here. Okay, and then 
We could, if we wanted to, use a trig function to solve for this y now, but I know that one of the angles is 61, one of the angles is 90, and I can figure out what the other angle is, right, pretty easily. If I add those two together, 61, 90, and subtract that from 180, so 180 minus 151, I will get 29 degrees. Okay, so I have solved, this is, this is how this works, I have solved the right triangle because I've basically labeled everything on this triangle, um, even the three things that I was missing, um, and uh, there it is, okay? A little bit of work for some parts of it, but not too bad, all right?